welcome back to the next module 5a in this module we will discuss about a very important aspect which will help you to actually measure the different aspect associated with natural resources management and this is participatory rural appraisal in short we call it pra and another one is rapid rural appraisal in short we call rra now pra and rra are two very very important tools that most of the professionals in the field of natural resources management use so before we you know get into a detail of these two very important tools that are used for measuring natural resource base let us try to understand the basic concept of these two tools participatory rural appraisal pra it is a methodology which is used for interacting with rural communities understanding and learning from them it is more like a and tool where community participate with experts so it is a combination of approaches and methods that enable the rural people to share to enhance and analyze their knowledge to plan act monitor and also to evaluate the natural resources whereas rapid rural appraisal or rra is a semi structured activity where the role of community or rural people tribal people are relatively less this is largely carried out by a multidisciplinary you know expert team and designed to acquire new information in a very quick manner in a short period of time so it consists of a series of techniques for quick and dirty we call it quick and dirty research that can generate quick results of less precision but greater evidential value so these two rra and pra as you understand they are characteristically very different in case of pra the community is involved it is more like a people oriented tool for measuring evaluating natural resources whereas rra it's with a different purpose you know to quickly get some information suppose you know government or some agency needs an information within a week so that means they want a kind of a overall information and idea so in that kind of situation rra or rapid rural appraisal will be the correct tool to use rapid rural appraisal has been started in 1970 largely by social science says uh, people the basic idea as i said was to collect analyze and evaluate very quickly about something in the ecosystem rra is is a more kind of a extractive or eliciting approach in which the main idea is data collection by outsiders when i say outsiders means there will not be people from that area where from you are getting the information so as i said that a group of expert people will just go there look at that it's kind of a helicopter type of approach so the information in this way actually generated on the basis of some kind of predetermined methods or questions or tools or kind of a, a list of you know items that you just you know give tick marks like that so the key principle behind this rapid rural appraisal is kind of a visualization of the questions and results by using kind of a some short brief questions or symbols about certain activity or resources so the scope for very detailed analysis detailed knowledge about your resources from an area is not possible in case of rra the research methods are adjusted modified in a manner that you can get the information about an area or an ecosystem of community in a very quick manner so i would say that rra would be good way to have an idea about an place so before you go for pra which is more detail and more people oriented community will be involved and definitely the you know the expenditure will be much higher i would say that a rra study prior to pra would be good because you can decide then in case of pra 
how you should go ahead and approach. In case of RRA, uh, few methods which are actually often followed by people, you try to review the secondary sources of data like photographs, aerial observations, direct observations, food transacts, interviews with key informants or group interviews. You can go for mapping, diagramming, local histories, case studies, then ranking, scoring, timeline, short sample questionnaires at the end of this process and finally a rapid report writing in the field. So what are the different uses of this RRA? Now there are few stages of this RRA that are being carried out. So the pre-project before you start the project. So you will conduct several RRAs in an area that is new to the agency and a sense of the range of issues that need to be addressed is normally attained and by or better informed on the context of social, economic, political, environment, etc. where that particular project for which you are going into the field will be carried out. So this pre-project appraisal is very, very important. Once your pre-project appraisal is over, then you go for project design. In this project design phase, you ensure that the project is appropriate to the realities in the area where it will be working. And that realities information will come from your pre-project information or pre-project outcome. Third, early project intervention. Rapid rural appraisal early in the project can help the project you know, leaders or the people to further refine their objectives or you know modify or re-channelizing in such a way that you can actually get your objective fulfilled. In some cases these RRAs will logically lead to PRA which is a more detailed analysis that draw the communities more deeply into these planning processes. Next mid project level kind of you know appraisal as the project gets underway the staff, the staffs which are involved in that project may choose to select few, you know, member of, you know, communities in which they go regularly, visit them, interact with them. So they will talk with, interact with each other and then try to assess the effectiveness of this approach that they are following in this particular project. And that will enable a mid-level corrections, means in between the project, you will have a chance of corrections also looking at the you know we call it mid course correction looking at the way the project is moving. So finally once you have brought in some kind of you know corrections then finally at the end you come out with evaluation of various activities and then you study a kind of a you know SWOT analysis of the entire project we call is strength weakness threat and opportunity test and then you finally compile a report and there is the end of this exercise or appraisal which we call rapid rural appraisal. The concept of rapid rural appraisal as I said that is to get a kind of a first hand information about an area and the people associated with that area. So once RRA is done as I said that it is it actually leads to the more detailed analysis which we call as PRA or participatory rural appraisal. The concept of PRA was first developed in Kenya in 1980s in close collaborations with non-government organization operating at the you know, very grassroots level. It is a method by researcher as I said who want to plan their work in close proximity of people community. here you actually work with the people for their own benefit. So that approach is a very, very human approach in case of PR. It is not only improves the researchers knowledge, their information regarding certain issue of the community, but it also improves the interaction and the exchange of ideas between the rural communities and the researchers. So this approach PRA is best suitable for people like us, all of you when we go for some research in the field. Okay? So the USP of PRA is that it allows joint planning of project or any experiment with equal emphasis on researcher and local communities. 
So, the participation of rural communities in planning and executing of a research or of a project naturally will tend to increase the relevance of those results and there is a high chance that the outcome will be accepted and the outcome will be very good because you have started the entire work project along with the people for whom you are working. It is especially useful when a project or a research work is actually targeted to help resource poor farmers. Farmers who are actually in an area where they have no access to various important natural resources either for geographical region or for financial region or for any other social regions. So, in that kind of case under severe economical or ecological restraints, PRA and the results or outcome of PRA is very helpful for preparing a very effective and useful policy. Now, let us look at how PRA actually works. The word participation in PRA is actually used in three contexts. What are those three contexts? Number one, simply a cosmetic level. Whatever is proposed appears good. Donor agencies and governments require participatory approaches. They need, they always feel happy if you have consultants, if you have, you know, good experts, all right? And if you have good managers who can actually deal with the people, the community in a more effective manner, all right? Second, a co-opting practice. It is to mobilize labor and reduce the costs. Here, communities contribute their time, their efforts, to self-help projects with some outside assistance. How? Because as I said that PRA starts along with people. So, here suppose you are going for you know developing a watershed in a participatory manner, then you can actually invite the community and you can request them that this is for you, this, this pond is being created for you. So, let us you know join us, you put your effort and try to build this pond. So, in that case they will provide free labor because they understand this pond is going to stay with their community, it is not just going out from their community. So, the sense of ownership is instilled through PRA approach. Number third, an empowering process. PRA enables local people to do their own analysis, to take the command in their hand, to gain more confidence and finally to make their own decisions. That is what actually we all of us we want. We want to make those rural people who are staying in a naturally in endowed place, but they do not know how to actually utilize the maximum for their benefit and also how to actually preserve or conserve for their future generation. So, if PRA approach is properly done, it allows the local people to gain the confidence to take some decisions on their own. And PRA is also a bottom-up approach. Okay? If you look at that bottom-up paradigm in PRA, basically it implies that the transfer of power from the upper side people like institutions, disciplines, which have been dominant mostly to the lower people like, you know, rural people, institution, disciplines, which have been subordinate in most of the time. So, the inception is greatly dependent on the recognition of the fact that many development strategies have failed in our country or elsewhere in an attempt to impose something from the top. So, project or any initiative if it comes from the top on the people, there is a high chance of failure. In case of PRA, there is a shift in that. So, it works on a bottom up approach philosophy. So, it is a shift from data collection to data sharing and empowerment. In case of RRA, as you saw, this kind of sharing or empowerment does not take place. RRA is like we going into a village, we need some information, come back, analyze and submit suppose some report to the government for policy making, quick. But here you empower the people. It is a shift from 
from certain things to people. It is also a shift from extractive kind of survey questionnaires to experience shared by the local people. You have the time to listen the local people to understand their need, to understand their problem through dialogue. And if this is the way the management takes place along with people, naturally community or people will have a kind of a sense of ownership on the projects or on the initiative that actually you plan to carry out for their benefit. So the sense of ownership is generated through a good PRA, which is missing in case of RRA. Now let us look at the various unique features of PRA. PRA is iterative in nature. It involves community, people. It is informal in nature because you meet people, things happen through dialogue, interaction. Obviously, it is very much interactive and it is also innovative in nature. All right. So, iterative, community participation, informal, interactive and innovative. These are few unique features of participatory rural appraisal. Now, what are the advantages of PRA? PRA, it empowers people, it generates certain amount of respect, self-respect among the people, community. A localization effect also is generated. Enjoyment, because when you work, when people work as a group, as a community, certainly there will be a lot of fun. So, enjoyment is there and finally, inclusiveness. There is a sense of inclusiveness in PRA where you bring in men, women, community, everyone together to work for their own village or for their own area. All right. Now, when everything is good, I must also share with you some concerns or disadvantages of PRA. The term PRA itself is a difficulty. It is at times not rural and not participatory as well. There are risk of hijacking by you know experts formalism, disappointment and threats also can take place. The major shortcomings of PRA that it is very difficult to find the right team and right set of questions. Okay? Right team when I call that right composition of a team. In a PRA team, there has to be you know one woman. At least more is better because when you interact with people in various remote places, it has been seen that in most of the cases, if your team composed of only men, then the women farmers or community members will not come forward. So, not only to make your team inclusive in nature, but also for the benefit of success of the project or the PR exercise, you must have women also into your team. Focusing on the wrong target individual and vested interest on both sides is a risk in case of PRA. Sometimes it could happen, you know. Then some of the team members may not have that much, you know, tenacity or patience to listen and then move very slowly. So there will be chance that some of the team member might be too quick of focusing on part of the problem and instead of getting the full picture, they are happy with just you know few answers or feedback on a particular issue or problem. That's not the real objective of the peer exercise. There is a chance of getting misled by myths and gossip. As we know that uh, in rural areas, there are a lot of gossips around in the year. So you have to be a little bit careful about those myths and gossips. Lack of people and social skill can at times lead to some kind of unprofessionalism. I think that you have to smartly handle that because you cannot just uh, say someone that why you are late uh, by 10 minutes or so or okay stop talking all those uh, you know unwanted things. Rather you have to you know sometime allow them to speak because they are not ready or they were not daily basis coming there with a purpose in mind. It is your job to take them into the process in such a way that they feel comfortable with, 
to share the information and whatever they have in an honest manner. Sometime it also happens in case of PRA, assuming that a community is homogeneous, very, very important point. And we overlook the social differences that sometime actually leads to intervention benefiting only a few. So, we must be careful about that, that we generally consider that, okay, fine, whoever people, 30 people are here in my PRA exercise, all are same. No. If we do that, yes, it is easy for me to carry out the exercise further, but that is not the case in reality. So, these assumptions of uh, thinking about the community as homogeneous is dangerous. There is also resistance to allow local communities to determine the research agenda and giving them kind of professional recognition, which sometime creates some kind of misunderstanding among the people, the team that were going to uh, carry out the project and also the community. Okay? So, these, these are few points or concerns that one has to take care of when we go for PRA exercise in any area. All right? Now, types of PRA methods. As I said that it is a method or tool where people are involved. Now, three type of PRA methods we have and these three are one is space related means location, second is time and third is relational methods. In case of space related method, we generally generate social resource map, participatory modeling method, mobility map, services and opportunities map, transject map, participatory census methods are used. Okay? So, these are the sets of methods that are used in case of space related type of PRA method. In case of time related PRA method, timeline, we go for trend analysis, historical transject and seasonal diagram. So, these all are very, very uh, methodical and it actually gives you lot of clarity about the issues involved in an area and what kind of intervention or policies that could be formulated. So, each one of these tools are very, very important. Finally, the relation type methods, very, very sensitive, cause and effect of any event or any activity, network diagram, process map, anything, any process that you are carrying out there has to be mapped out, well-being ranking, that is a methodology that we carry out. Venn diagram, pair wise ranking, these all I will be discussing in future lectures. Matrix ranking, we can have pie chart, livelihood analysis, spider diagram and body mapping. So, these are the various kind of tools that we have under these three different types of PRA method. Is a huge thing PRA method and if you learn this uh, PRA and RRA, in a very professional manner, you know, the opportunity in this field is really enormous. So, as I said that in under again types of PRA methods, there are different uh, aspects that we discussed. If you see the relational methods under that various kind of activities are being carried out in a full-fledged PRA exercise. So, seasonal calendar we largely carry out to examine the seasonal patterns of crop, paste, diseases, rainfall, activities in any household or in a village. So, it in a season how different activities comes in if it is clearly mentioned somewhere that definitely would allow a good way of planning of any activity in that particular area, is not it? So, next, Venn diagram. Venn diagramming, it reveals the importance and the relevance of you know, involvement of local and external institutions in addressing various kind of problems, issues that exist in a particular area. It could be agricultural, it could be horticultural, it could be fishery, any kind of initiative or program. So, Venn diagram basically reveals the importance of local and external institutions, timelines and trends, very important. It actually enable the analysis for 
चेंज ओवर टाइम सच एस ए क्रॉप क्रॉप वेराइटीज ऑफ एन इन सम क्रॉप वेराइटीज टेक्स नाइन्टी डेज सम क्रॉप वेराइटीज ग्रोज इन विंटर सम ग्रोज इन समर लाइक दैट ओके सो टाइम लाइन एंड ट्रेंड इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू ऑब्जर्व इवेल्युएट दोज एक्टिविटीज ऑल राइट एक्सटेंट ऑफ सॉयल इरोशन सपोज इन ए पर्टिकुलर इन अ ट्रेंड इज फॉलोड और इज ऑब्जर्व देन दैट विल हेल्प यू टू डिसाइड द प्रॉपर करेक्टिव मेजर नेक्स्ट मैट्रिक स्कोरिंग इट हेल्प अस टू एग्जामाइन द पीपुल्स ओन क्राइटेरिया फॉर चूजिंग एमोंग डिफरेंट सेट्स ऑफ ऑप्शन सपोज देर आर डिफरेंट सेट्स ऑफ क्रॉप वेराइटीज अवेलेबल मैट्रिक स्कोरिंग विल हेल्प टू आइडेंटिफाई द मोस्ट वॉन्टेड वन और मोस्ट सुइटेबल वन सेम फॉर सॉयल फर्टिलिटी मेजर्स मेजर्स फॉर इरीगेशन सो मैट्रिक स्कोरिंग बेसिकली इट अलाउज यू टू फाइंड आउट द मोस्ट सुइटेबल और मोस्ट यू नो इम्पॉर्टेंट वन and that helps the community also to so choose the right one next resource and agroecological zone mapping mapping areas with similar characters in terms of soil type crops grown land access tenure so resource and agroecological zone mapping help you to understand the distributions you know of different characteristics in terms of different natural resources in a particular area next causal and impact diagramming very important this particular type of diagram it shows the flow causal relationships and other such connections such as impact of irrigation on soil erosion or impact of chemical pesticides on insects okay so these causal and impact diagramming also help basically to identify some reason or causes of problem the nature of problem so that obviously will allow you to find out a right path to regulate that then next comes farm planning and flow diagramming this map individual map farm plots and their location in relation to each other farm mapping will show the relationship between a farm plots and their location it also helps you know community to examine different kind of management practices that are followed in that particular area according to different kind of cropping practices different kind of rotation different type of nutrient management practices basically the farm mapping will allow someone to see that okay in this area this kind of crop grown this kind of fertilizer use this kind of nutrients are being applied so if that picture is clear through a you know good pr exercise it will help the uh, suppose a district commissioners or a government uh, to decide and uh, to plan a corrective measure on that okay transject work is to learn about the locality that that someone is working on it helps you to know the different types of you know infrastructure crops trees ponds any resources that are available there basically a transject work when you mean mean suppose this is a field plot a transject work can be from one direction to the other so it could be from north to south and then go corner diagonally there then again come towards south then diagonally you can go towards west from west to east again diagonally come back to west so you can basically get a detailed information through transject work of an any area all right so that transject work often also being carried out uh, along with community and that that actually allows you to make a rapport with your community that for whom or with whom you are going to work on that's a very good way to establish a uh, friendly relation with the community where actually you are going to work on now comparison between pra and rra by now already you might have understood the difference between these two pra and rra in terms of research methods both these methods fall in the qualitative side of the research area they are not uh, suited for gathering statistics or analysis calculation of precise numerical measurements they help us to gather information about some order of magnitude okay trends so kind of timeline 
the qualitative information which we can get from these kind of tools help us to understand the reason why a certain kind of phenomena is happening in certain area what are the reasons for that how to address those issues so that kind of picture that you get through this kind of exercise pra and rra in terms of participatory method if you see pra is having higher participatory than rra on this dimension pra can be applied in ways that are more or less detailed in analysis detail in characteristics so pras in which community members you know get involved into pra that actually will take the control of the entire exercise you give lot of freedom to the community in case of pra but in case of rra the control is more with the people experts going into an area not with the community in case of rra there is generally little expectation that the community will be in charge of the process okay but they can also you know sometime can give some information but that is not as detail level as pra the involvement of people and community in pra is is very much important for a pra to get successful so these are little bit of comparisons of differences but the commonality of principle that is shared by pra and rra if you look at offsetting the biases both are almost the same follow the same principle rapid and progressive learning gender sensitivity focused learning accept diversity and differences of a community optimal ignorance is another thing that you have to consider in both the cases triangulation of data we will discuss about triangulation of data and others aspect in detail in the following lectures positive attitude so these are largely the common principles that are for being followed in both pra and rra now as these slides uh, quickly will give you a kind of a snapshot of the differences between pra and rra if you look at from the purpose point of view rra actually it's inform you know the project design gather baseline information monitor and evaluate pra tries to build the capacity improve decision making capacity of community then it is monitored by community in case of team level if you see rra largely multidisciplinary team of experts and specialists whereas in case of pra it is largely villagers sometime expert persons are also there okay but they work with the community in case of sites limited number of representative sites are taken in case of rra but in case of pra larger number of sites are being taken rra is discrete studies usually last 5 to 7 days we're talking about time period required but in case of pra it's a you know long duration study it takes much larger time period than rra tools and techniques point of view the range of tools and techniques are more or less well structured kind of things are not used in case of rra it is mostly semi structured as i discussed earlier the purpose is quick and brief information to collect in case of rra a range of tools and techniques uh, in case of pra are largely used for detail analysis so we discussed also the uh, different type of methods and there we discussed about if you see that what are the different tools that we use in case of uh, this uh, analysis but overall when you come to documentation aspects also you will find that in case of rra well written report uh, which captures mostly the depth of complexity of the information obtained you know in through the brief study in case of pra it's a very detailed report you will find village log books so notes principal findings activities you will also get community action plan in case of pra so these two naturally they are very different to make the long story short i can say that rra is a very very brief and quick way of knowing an area collect information pra is a detailed information to know about area its people it is a process with the people by the people and for the people so more human oriented approach is followed in case of pra so friends 
I stop here and I look forward to the next lecture and we'll continue with a little bit more about different aspects of, of PRA and RRA. Thank you very much. Thank you.